There is a holy grail of entry-level coffee grinder. It makes a beautiful cup of filter coffee, but it also creates true nine bar espresso. It's low cost and beautiful. The only problem is this grinder has been impossible to create until now. The fellow Opus reaches for the ambitious goal of checking all of these boxes. Great filter coffee, great espresso, low cost, and beautiful. But did Fellow hit the mark with it? The problem with coffee grinders is that they tend to do either espresso or filter really well, but not both. At least until you're willing to spend a couple grand on a grinder. So for home baristas who are just getting into it, they tend to either get one grinder for each use or settle for mediocre coffee on one end of the spectrum or the other. Grinders like the DF83 make bridging the gap a little easier, but that grinder still almost costs a thousand dollars. And even the iconic niche grinder is really a little bit better suited to espresso than it is to filter. The Lego Mini came along, but that grinder still costs around $400 and is pretty loud. Can Fellow really span the gap between espresso and filter in a grinder that costs $195? Well, it's not perfect, but what Fellow has done here is pretty impressive. Now, brief disclaimer here, Fellow did send me the Opus and contract me to do one Instagram reel for them as a part of their product launch. This video review, however, is for you, my audience. Fellow has not seen it, endorsed it, or approved it, and anything I say here is based on the merits of the Opus itself. Now, like with all of my videos, there is a purchase link down below. If you decide to buy it after watching this review, that doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does go to support my channel. Now with the Opus, Fellow has created a true entry level single dosing grinder. It uses a set of stainless steel six spoke 40 millimeter, Fellow calls them burly burrs, and they're driven by the motor through a three stage gearbox, which provides six Newton meters of torque to the burrs at 350 RPM. And it's got a couple auto stop timer functions on it as well. This is a stepped grinder with 41 steps of adjustment all the way through cold brew over here to espresso over here. It's very low retention grinder with that straight drop design from the burrs down into the catch bin, making for very minimal retention. It's also got that same anti-static technology that we first saw in the fellow Ode Gen 2 grinder. Now, I've been watching pretty closely, and as the Opus has gotten closer to launch, I've seen a fair bit of skepticism about it online, which is warranted partially due to its ridiculously low price of $195. Totally makes sense. Fellow has never done an espresso grinder before, and even the Ode Gen 2 in its kind of stock configuration, which costs $375, doesn't even do espresso. Now, you can upgrade the burrs, but that's a whole other expense. One thing that I have been absolutely loving on both the O Gen 2 and this grinder that I haven't seen a lot of buzz about online is that anti-static tech. And it uses the same ionization technology as you find in a hair dryer, if you can believe it, to get rid of the static from the beans as they're being grinded. Now, like, I really can't overstate how much this changes the day-to-day -day impact on your workflow and keeping your brew area clean. If you use a coffee grinder, you're well familiar with static getting the beans stuck to like everything. Even the O Gen 1 was kind of terrible for this and you needed to like spray the beans with water and do all that kind of stuff to get rid of static. On this grinder, I have never done RDT and the beans just fall into the catch bin with absolutely no static. I just love that feature and it really is a big one for me. One big question mark that I have seen quite a bit online about this grinder is about the use of plastic throughout its design. Now, two notes on that. Number one, this is a $195 coffee grinder. There's gonna be plastic used. And number two, plastic has come a long way, and I think just because there's plastic used in a design doesn't mean we should assume it's junk. Now, not only does the Opus look as nice as the rest of the fellow line, but I saw as I was going through the forums that they had done accelerated life testing on this grinder, simulating five plus years of use, pulling several espresso shots a day, and they had experienced zero failures. Now, take that what it's worth because it's coming from the fellow team, but for them to put that out publicly like that, that says something. 
Also the gearbox is something that Fellow is clearly very proud of in the design of the Opus. You can see their team jumping in on forums about it and they go as far to claim that the Opus will never stall even when grinding very light roasts on espresso settings. When I was testing the Opus, I really tried to put it through its paces and see if I could get the thing to seize up when grinding some light roasts, and I couldn't. So that was very encouraging for me to see. Now, one other concern that I have seen floating out there around the Opus is around the available range for espresso. Now, in my testing, I was able to get pretty much exactly what Fellow says, and that sweet spot for espresso between the settings of one and two, and that is four total steps on the Opus. Now, this kind of makes sense when you consider the fact that the Opus is designed to cover the complete range all the way from cold brew down to espresso across 41 steps. However, if you're an espresso person, you know that that is not a lot of wiggle room for finding the sweet spot for any espresso bean that you might be brewing. The Barazza Encore ESP, which is just released and targeted at the same price point and market, has 20 steps for espresso by comparison. But there is a secret sauce hidden inside the Opus that makes this problem a lot easier to navigate. Each major step here on the grind adjustment makes for 50 microns of travel um, between the burrs, either closer together or further apart. But when you take off the hopper, there is a micro adjustment hiding inside that allows you to get down to 16 microns of adjustment. Now that's more than enough flexibility to dial in any espresso that you might have going on. I will say I did stick to the very fine end of that spectrum, especially when grinding decaf for espresso, but I was able to pull off any espresso that I wanted on a true nine bar 58 millimeter machine. I was really happy to see this because even though this is an entry-level grinder, I'm a bit of an espresso freak. I really like to dial things in and it was nice to see that the Opus could get there at such a low price point. Now one downside about this macro micro adjustment setup is that it is pretty confusing until you get the knack of it. But that's just a factor of the low price and amount of range they're trying to cram into this grinder. Now, if you end up getting the Opus and you want a video on using the micro adjustment, just let me know in the comments and I would be happy to put one together for you. I have to say, I also really like the redesigned catch bin on the Opus, which is all plastic in comparison to the metal catch bin of the Ode. Combined with the anti-static tech, the grinds just slip out of it. It's very nice to use. It also comes with this espresso attachment for the catch bin, which is super nice. Not only does it work perfectly, but it's also cleverly designed to fit both a 58 millimeter portafilter as well as smaller Breville portafilters. The lid has some very nice touches as well with the full grind size reference included inside and a divider that helps you use the lid as kind of a loose volumetric dosing guide if you don't want to mess around with the scale. The grinder has really low retention too, which I like that straight fall through design from the burrs down to the dosing cup really does make for low retention. I tried it and without RDT, I was measuring like 0.1 to 0.2 grams. And even that, if I use the lid as kind of like a bellows, I could get that last bit of retention out, which is really great to see. Now, what do I really think about the Opus? Well, usually when I'm doing a review like this, I try and dig up a couple bad things about a product, even if I really like it. And as you can probably tell with the Opus, it was a little bit hard to do that. The grinder makes a great cup of filter coffee, but even with the macro adjustments on the outside, you can get a good espresso shot. But with that micro adjustment in the inside, you can really dial things in to a much finer level of detail that you would never normally be able to see on a $195 grinder. Sure, it's plastic, but at that price, there's gonna be plastic and it still looks great. And especially with that accelerated life testing, you know, we're gonna to need to see how the Opus performs over real world extended life, but that's encouraging. I think with this grinder, Fellow made all of the compromises in exactly the right places to get the cost down to where it is. 
You know, it really is an incredible time for Home Espresso with the advancements of tech and materials, manufacturing, and brands kind of seeing this market for people who want to get into espresso at home. We're seeing some of these really great low cost entry level options starting to hit the scene. You know, like five years ago, a grinder like this wouldn't even have been possible. So if you're looking for an all around entry level grinder that can do espresso and filter, or even if you just wanna do one of the two, the Fellow Opus is going to be one of the main contenders in this category, likely for some time. If this video was at all helpful for you, I would love for you to subscribe and let me know what you wanna see next. Until next time, happy brewing and cheers. Mm -hmm.